Welcome back, everyone, uh, to Monroe Live. Um, I'm Kevin Hardy, and I'm going to be talking a little bit today about the F-150 Lightning battery structure itself. Um, as we speak, Corey and Sandy are flying out to California for some big Tesla meet, and a lot of the other crew that we kind of typically go through this with is on much-earned vacation, so you're stuck with me and uh, a half-black guy from a lightsaber duel with my daughter. So um, when you look at the overall pack for the Lightning, it is very similar to the Mach-E in its overall execution strategy, which makes sense. You know, they, there are lessons, and le lessons learned with the Mach-E, and processes can kind of carry forward and be scaled for the Lightning to quickly get into production. So what we're kind of looking at here for the top cover is a very large single piece SMC component that is fastened in place with a roughly 68, if I recall correctly, fasteners. It does have a separate seal with, uh, and the fasteners themselves are self-threading into the aluminum extrusion itself. Um, as we kind of come over to the extrusion body of the, the, um, the battery pack, you can kind of see the, the various uh, walls for each cell and the two-tiered kind of battery strategy that the Lightning has. Um, kind of starting from the front, um, all of our high voltage connections come in through here. Um, it's not necessarily a bad execution. Uh, we've kind of pointed out in some other videos with the ID4 where essentially uh, all these high voltage uh, parts are integrated into a single injection molded uh, component where they can use slides to kind of omit provisions they need for various packs. Typically, um, strategies like this are done to tailor battery capacity or leverage the price of um, high volume components. So there is some benefits to doing this, this strategy, but some of the downfalls are you end up with essentially a series of uh, excess fasteners, redundant seals, because you now have these um, components sealing up against and fastening to this casting here, which is then sealed again and fastened to this body. So um, I'd imagine we probably could see some improvements in the future with this and probably it's honestly on Ford's radar as well because there's, um, this is not a bad execution by, by any means, but uh, there are some, I think, low hanging fruit that can be quickly optimized, validated, and then brought into production for you know, like a mid-cycle action as well. So again, this is an extrusion. Um, this is a four cell on the, the walls themselves. The cells are completely encapsulated and then they're flanked on either side by essentially like a C channel um, for the overall structure of the battery pack. The front here is where the battery ma uh, management system resides. There is a small, roughly, I think it's 11.95 kilowatt hour module in the front. Uh, as the pack tapers inward. And then the rest of the uh, eight modules are 16.44 kilowatt hours, which gives the pack an overall capability of 144 kilowatt hours, but a usable to the customer 131 kilowatt hour uh, capability. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting is you see these, these bulkheads here where the modules sit. Um, they do not go all the way to the top. And one thing that is a little bit different with respect to the Mach-E is the Mach-E, if I recall correctly, uh, goes all the way out um, these, these bulkheads to the walls of the battery housing itself and they are welded there. This may be for a series of reasons, simply maybe manufacturability. These are very simple, you know, L extrusions, so they don't really cost that much and it's a, essentially an additional welding operation uh, in contrast to the Mach-E. There could be some side impact considerations as well to kind of give it some float before it starts getting into the actual module space itself. Um, but obviously you have to kind of leverage the, the overall roll up of essentially machining out the wall of this particular uh, extrusion. And then if you wanted to run and essentially have these extrusions with the ability to float in between and then how that affects essentially the overall buildup and stack of the pack. This is probably honestly a, a relatively simple and, and elegant strategy, even though it has some additional components from the Mach-E itself. One thing I'd love to see is you have these essentially separate cooling plates for each one of the modules themselves. So these are two, two pieces and they are brazed and then essentially just has a, there might be a little fluid, so I'm just being a little careful. Um, they're brazed together and it is pretty well essentially tailored to the overall profile of the component. I'll show you the mach here in a second. So there's been some revisions from the mach -E strategy. These are just essentially open cooling channels themselves. We'd love to see this taken a little bit farther where 
essentially the cooling channel potentially inverted. There's some obviously surface area considerations with the module, but uh, potentially having this stamping revised, have those features placed in the actual battery housing itself, and then captivated by a nice flat surface with the module sit on and get rid of essentially uh, nine cooling module plates out of the design itself. And then you can kind of see a little bit of a difference with the strategy on the Mach-E here, where they have essentially, essentially a dimple arrangement to control the flow of coolant through the, uh, through the modules themselves. And these can be tailored and adjusted based off you know, the, the vehicle's needs. But you can see a little bit of the overhang here with the brazing you know, operation. So on the Lightning itself, you can see that essentially this material was removed and uh, uh, from the overall assembly, which is a big weight save for them. Not necessarily a material save, given that these pickup provisions kick out and the blank size overall doesn't save, but uh, doesn't change, excuse me. But this is all off fall, can be recycled, sent back to suppliers and sold as scrap. So um, I think just very quickly between the Mach-E launching and then the Lightning coming out, this small and relatively easy change is a, a good one in the right direction itself. Um, as we kind of come back here, you see like a mirrored strategy for the, the second decking of the, the last three modules themselves. And then essentially they use extruded posts, which are um, like w with a, a welding operation with one-sided access. It's, it's a simple, cheap, and elegant uh, you know, setup to essentially give you the space that you need for the, the modules themselves. And one of the things that is, is very different about this pack in particular from a, a structural perspective is with these bulkheads being a little bit lower and uh, sub flush of the ceiling surface for the uh, pack itself. Essentially, there's essentially a single vent strategy for the overall um, pack itself where some of the Teslas and other, and other vehicles vent based off each module. There's pluses and minuses to that. Obviously, this is a very cost effective solution, but if you were to have some issues with some of the modules, there's kind of a, a potentially a cascading effect throughout the pack, uh, similar to the Titanic and its waterproof bulkheads, if you will. Um, overall, I'll kind of come to the other side here where the camera is. Um, it's a pretty simple execution. There's not essentially a lot of inherent structure within the actual battery housing itself. And one of the things that's very unique about this vehicle in comparison to essentially um, any other electric vehicle uh, on the market to include the, the Rivian and uh, the GM execution as well is this pack is isolated. So I think this is kind of getting into one of the drawbacks potentially. I don't know the, the actual reason of why it is, is isolated or what drove it uh, to that consideration, but uh, something from a durability perspective or NVH perspective drove uh, Ford to essentially get out of a fixed mounting provision, isolate this pack prior to it being mounted to the frame, which the frame then is isolated to the actual body itself. <clears throat> so when you kind of look at this, and we've kind of spoken to the Rivian frame and the Lightning frame, you, know, you end up with a, a interesting kind of uh, separation of parts and complexity within this particular battery pack itself and its execution with a very, very robust ladder frame underneath this to support essentially the, the overall load requirements, impingement requirements coming up from the ground, uh, not visible here is essentially a whole series of skid plates that do cover the inner portion of the ladder assembly here, but you can see those mounting brackets. Um, we feel there's a lot of opportunity within this particular ladder frame as well, specifically as the volume of the Lightning has increased um, from where it initially was with the run, the 40,000 units to roughly 150,000 units. And given its reception and being essentially sold out no additional reservations, um, they, Ford may be motivated to essentially simplify this more, maybe with some, some hydroformings like they do with the front end structure of their vehicle, which gets rid of a lot of welding operations, nice smooth interfaces, holes done in tool. It's a little more expensive on the capital side, but I do think there is some opportunity to get some complex shapes and part reduction and welding operation reduction in this frame itself, given that it is, it is unique within the market space that it, um, that it needs a isolated cradle. And essentially there's this bifurcation of strategies where the, the, the housing itself is not directly structural um, and it has a frame that's kind of coming along with it. So I, I wouldn't be surprised in a future mid-cycle action of the Lightning to see some more revisions coming through here, specifically with the skid plates as 
There's nothing wrong with the steel. It's cheap, it's strong, um, but it is a little bit heavier. And I'm personally a little surprised, uh, you know, my truck has a, like a polymer, uh, nylon, high glass fill skid plate in the fuel tank. Um, and it's prevalent on essentially most of Ford's off-road centric uh, body on frame vehicles, the Bronco, the Bronco R, the Raptor, Raptor R, and essentially its whole portfolio. Granted, you know, a fuel tank, even at these current gas prices, filled is not $20,000. Um, there's a lot to be said for protecting this as it is a very high um, cost piece within the vehicle itself. But um, it is overall kind of an interesting execution. I would suspect things to change kind of moving forward, uh, more specifically, potentially with the, the top cover itself. You know, I could see as there's some comfortability with the module's performance over a longer life period. Maybe they go to a bonded strategy where they're using essentially a, uh, like an RTV sealer to clamp down on potentially an SMC, depending on how the volume goes with this vehicle. Um, that is a, a very large part requiring a very large tool. And uh, there's not many places kind of in the region that can do that. As we've, uh, at Monroe, I've looked into a series of SMC strategies for other customers going into different parts of the EV space. And there's a lot of benefits of SMC, but there are some limitations from uh, the availability of capital equipment to support it. So, you know, overall, it's not a, it's not a bad execution. It's, it's exactly kind of what I expected to see as taking what we saw in the Mach-E and adapting it to the Lightning itself. It is very unique with respect to some of the legacy um, drawbacks, if you will, with the frame. But obviously, we've, we've talked about the frame itself is, is very simple in comparison to some of the other uh, vehicles on the market. And that kind of um, cascades into functional requirements being driven into this vehicle, where it has to perform for side impact, off-road impingement from the rear, and just overall structural performance and NVH. But, you know, they have, they being Ford, has seemed to take a lot of effort to ensure that the Lightning is quiet and made some very deliberate decisions to ensure uh, that it does perform well. So um, I think overall that's kind of a, like a good summary you know, of the, the battery pack itself. With respect to the modules, they'll come a little bit later. Most of our electrical wizards are, are busy right now with the Tesla pack and some other costing um, you know, operations. So given uh, you know, just our internal kind of workflow here and given the fact that there is, I think, a fair amount of things to kind of talk about this separately from the modules themselves. It's essentially been split, if you will, into the two videos. So um, overall, I'm excited to see where it's going. This makes sense to me, uh, given essentially the, the timing of the program, how fast this came to market. And I don't, while there is, I think, room for improvement, nothing stands out to me from the perspective of, uh, of decisions that I could not justify myself had I had to essentially uh, launch this product, if you will. So uh, I think there we'll kind of pause, you know, with it. I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, the, the subscriptions do generally help us. It helps kind of get the word out of both what's kind of going on here and for, um, for us. Uh, I generally appreciate just talking about vehicles. So thank you from myself, uh, you know, for all the engineers out there. Love seeing kind of what you guys are working through. It's, it's not easy to kind of get this stuff as the whole industry goes into a new space. And we love seeing Easter eggs and generally appreciate kind of all the effort that goes into this. So uh, on that point, I'll kind of transition to, we do sell reports. Um, there is a lot of information with respect to kind of the cost, weight, and just kind of some uh, eye-catching eye features that we do notice through a lot of these components. And hopefully um, the value proposition is there for you and can help you essentially leverage the decisions that you guys are making in your own development kind of moving forward with your products. So again, thank you very much and uh, I appreciate it.